Welcome to One on One. I'm Phil Tillman, your host. And today we're taping this show from the banks of the Wicomico River at Old Green Hill Church, na uh, named St. Bartholomew's Church. And with me is the curator since 1965 of this old, beautiful old building, H. Lay Phillips Lay. <laughs> Thank you for, for letting us come wow. in and film this absolutely gorgeous gem that we have here uh, in Wicomico County. The history, tell us a little bit about the history of this site. Well, the original church was a log structure built about 150, 200 yards north of this site in 1692. And it burned down and then they established this building in 1733 is when it was completed. It started about 1730 is when they started building it. And uh, it was completed in 1733, That's hence the date of 1733. And this is put on the headers on the east side, up at the top of the building, you can see it from the outside. Uh, and this was the, more or less the mother church for this area it was established then. And from this church, several uh, chapels of ease were started. And the rector of this church lived up Wicomico Creek, which is now Brentwood, if you know, over in Somerset County. Oh, yeah. Well, that's where the rector's uh, home was, the rectory. And there was a chapel at ease was, was there. And then one was established at what old Spring Hill on Route 50, mm -hmm. St. Paul's. There was one st established in, I don't know whatever happened to it, in Pittsville, believe it or not. Wow. And it sort of went by the wayside. Then there was one established down in uh, Ty Askin, which is St. Mary's, and it, it's still active. In fact, this church falls under that, the uh, stewardship of that parish. And then there was one in Quantico, uh, St. Philip's, and of course the one in Salisbury, St. Peter's. And there was one more, which is hard to believe, is up in Laurel, Delaware, at, at Broad, uh, Broad Creek. Wow. And it's and still there. It's still there, and it's rather active. I mean, semi-active. I'll yeah. put it much more active. And it's, and it's just like this building here, only it's wood. Well, we've all, we've all heard a little bit of that history of Maryland and, and Lord Baltimore, the Calverts being Catholic. Um, how did how do you how do you account for the fact that the Church of England got such a foothold here on the Eastern Shore, where the was were the Calverts kind of into religious tolerance, or was that the case? I guess they were, because uh, of course in England, you know, in the Church of England, you know, it's, <laughs> was uh, established by Henry the <laughs> Eighth, and, and basically. Yeah. That became the Church of England, right. and hence, in today's world, they want to separate religion and state. Mm -hmm. and that's where that came from. Because, yeah. uh, but uh, but now this this church today is under the I guess the auspices of the Episcopal Church of the United of the United States, right? And. Um, well, in 1733, though, it was still an Anglican church. Amen. <laughs> and the, the uh, priests were, I guess, got their authority from England? The Bishop of London. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, all the English settlers here, and I guess there is a significance to the fact that this is built on a major waterway. Is that how people came that's to where, church? That's it. That most uh, things like this were established on waterways because that was the main means of transportation other than a horse. <laughs> and that's, even the rectors came by boat uh -huh. from, from Quantico, Quantico Creek. Creek. Yeah. 
uh, not Quantico Creek, uh, Wicomico, Wicomico Creek. Creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Qu Quantico Creek, excuse this me. This way, and uh, other people did too. Of course, they came a, a horse and buggy or horses, or whatever have you. Now, we've got some thick brick walls here. You said it probably took at least two, two or more years to build this huge building. Uh, and for those times or any times, um, the brick is original to 1733? Yes. Now, these... Not all of it. Where we're sitting is not original. Uh -huh. But the walls are. And the floor, a lot of the floor is. Yes. Now, how about these, these beautiful paneled um, pew boxes? I was um, saying, can I get back to the floor? Oh, yeah. At one time, there was a wooden floor laid over top of these bricks. Oh. And over the years, and between the our way the church deteriorated and all the, the floors got rotted and got eaten up with termites. So they took them out, ripped all the floor, wooden flooring out, what was left of it, and never put it back and just left the brick floor. Yeah. Because you can tell, see where the uh, pews are raised a little bit. One, one brick, yeah. brick length up to keep they them can, off the floor. And that was... Uh, so well, anyhow, that's the way it was originally. In fact, there was another pew that came up to here, as I have said, and this was a much smaller area here. And we're looking behind us, we're looking at the paneled uh, pew boxes, uh, which I guess were uh, pretty standard at that time to have pew boxes. For why did they why did they have the boxes? Is that for each family had one or something? Each or? family paid for their own pew with tobacco back tax. That's the way they that was the big means of uh, that was monetary. Money. Yeah, yeah. And each family had their own pew for two reasons: one for warmth in the winter and keep the kids under control. <laughs> that was their responsibility. That's keep right. Their own kids. So that's why you have these what they call box pews. I read somewhere in one of the histories, and we have a couple of histories of Old Green Hill Church, that the attendance in the winter time fell off dramatically, and in the summertime is when people went to church. Uh, I guess that's because there wasn't any heat in here. You can see why. Yeah, it would be it would be blistery cold in here. Yeah, in fact, I've been told that everybody brought when they came here to when they did come in church they would heat up bricks from their own homes and bring them with them and put them in the pews with them <laughs> the bricks would re retain the warmth uh -huh. for a while wow that's the story i've heard now, now i wasn't there so i don't know <laughs> let's talk about this uh pulpit that goes you have to, the priest would have to walk upstairs to get up into that pulpit i guess he was speaking down to the congregation, words from yeah. on high, or so to speak, or something like that. Uh, is that pulpit also original to, to yes. this church, 1733? Yes. So they've been, used, there have been a lot of sermons preached from that right up there where we're looking. Amen. Golly day. And the entrance, the two entrance doors at the back, uh, the, they, they're there was, original. Yeah, there's an, there was another set of pews in the back. Oh. So they had to come in this side and that side. It wasn't that they, people didn't speak, but I mean, that's just the way they, yeah. uh, they made them. What, uh, I've, I've read a few times that uh, when we had a Revolutionary War, um, the Episcopal Church, the, then the Church of England, of course, right. was what was the Anglican Church um, kind of, kind of fell on hard times because the, the rebels here, the you know, people in the United States, uh, in the colonies, kind of looked at, at the Anglicans as being Tories or uh, faithful to the crown, right. so to speak. Um, was, there a, was there a lull then, a, a kind of a rough time for the Episcopal Church? That's when the church started deteriorating during the Revolutionary War because of this conflict. Yeah. But, and, I mean, not just the war, but the differences of, of opinion. Of opinion. Or, well, and the, the, the same right. accounts, Lay, said that uh, there were actually um, British troops bivouacked right yes. here in this building and, uh, in, the, in that war. There's a pew back in the back relating to this. I've never found it, but after the war, Revolutionary War, 
at the first service they held in this church. Of course, you realize they had uh, the rebels and the, uh, and the Tories. And the priest got up there and proposed a prayer to George Washington, the first president of the United States. And this one man who owned a pew back there got up, took his family, locked his pew door, and walked out with his family and threw the key in the river. Oh, oh. He was a Tory. He was loyal to the crown. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure where that pew is, but it's back there on that side somewhere. He didn't like that upstart George Washington. No, he huh? didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when was it or how did we come about to have the Episcopal Church of the United States? Was that shortly after the Revolutionary War? Yes, because, I mean, a lot of people believed in the worshiping the way of the, of the Church of England, but yet they, they wanted to keep ties with it, but they didn't want to be associated with it. I'll put it, it's hard to say. But, uh, well, as your story goes, then, the, the, the main difference was instead of praying for the, his, uh, his Royal Highness, the, the King, King. You play, prayed for the President of the United States, and we still in the Episcopal Church pray for the President of the United That's States right. in, our, in our daily prayers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the early uh, ministers of this church, and especially in relation to this absolutely gorgeous silver communion set that we're looking at up here on the altar. Um, what's the history of that? Well, that was given to this church by the Reverend Adams. And it was supposedly given to him by Queen Anne of England. Now, there's some dispute whether it was given to him by the Queen or whether it just happened to be Queen Anne, period, silver. But it's beautiful. Yeah. And he, in turn, gave it to the church. Now, he was rector here for 65 years. Good grief. So... Uh, that's a long time to be in one place. <laughs> now, is he the one that built the house on the Wicomico Creek? No. Uh, no, before uh, him? Uh, that was, uh, I'm not, not sure who that was. Uh, oh, okay. But, but anyway, no. the Reverend Adams for 65 years, and he gave this, and it says for, for the use of this parish in Somerset County. So this, well, was, this was Somerset County then. At the time. Because yeah. uh, Wicomico didn't come into existence until 67, I think it was 1867. Now, in the um, war between the, straight, uh, between the states, or the, as you say, the war of northern aggression, <laughs> uh, what, was the, what was the role of the Episcopal Church in Maryland? Uh, it must have had southern sympathizers as well as Yankee sympathizers. Well, a lot of, oh, yeah. yeah. I guess it's the like whole state. Yeah, the whole country is like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, it was brother against brother and brother against father. And, uh, and the first bishop of the Diocese of Easton, which was formed after the uh, Civil War, was a, uh, Bishop Henry Lay. Who you're who named for. <laughs> yeah. Henry Lay. But, uh, he, I won't say he fought, but he was on the side of the South. Oh. I mean, well, he, with, so, name, I mean, <laughs> with that background and your name, Henry Lay Phillips, uh, now, no wonder you call it the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well the, we can understand a little bit. Well, the... the, the no, he was the first bishop of the Diocese of Easton. Okay. Which, I don't know, was formed back in, what, 1830? Uh, well, no, it had to be after, after, after the, the Civil War. Wait, right, because it was all originally was just the Diocese of Maryland. I see. And then they split off after the War of northern aggression yeah okay <laughs> now this absolutely gorgeous building uh didn't always look like this it fell into some disrepair it sure did what was the what was the kind of the time period when it was no no longer used and vandalized and everything else after basically it started to deteriorate after the uh, revolutionary war and then it picked up a little bit 
and see what happened, people started going to these other chapels of ease. That's it, and they found that the river was navigable clear to Salisbury. And because this was originally, this area was laid out as a port and town, mm -hmm. port of entry and a town. And when they found it was navigable to Salisbury, that is the parish that really grew up big yeah. time. Yeah. And people left here, because this was so far out, as you might say, in the boonies. <laughs> it was which is which is maybe why it um, fell in disrepair, but also maybe why it's still in its original state. Yeah, because I guess if it was an active church like the wooden floor, and they wanted to put heat and drop the ceiling and everything else, probably. And right. this is pretty much the way it was way back in 1733. If you remember, several years ago, we used to have chimneys here, and they weren't original. You can see the marks where they went up through. For heat. Two, two, yeah, they had these big iron stoves, but they were not original. That's no. why we tore them out. So originally, they just didn't have heat in here. No. Which, Nor air conditioning. No. <laughs> Except when you raise the windows. Yeah. <laughs> big yeah. time. Yeah. Well, it, it takes a lot to raise those windows, as we, as we have found out. They're huge. Well, now, tell us about this, this service that has been going on here for years, I guess, you know, St. Bartholomew's mm -hmm. Day. This is St. Bartholomew's Church. Um, what's that all about? Well, St. Bartholomew, you know, it was, uh, it was on St. Bartholomew's Day. That's when the Huguenots were persecuted and, and uh, many of them massacred in, actually in France. And that's why they named this uh, church St. Bartholomew's Day or St. Bartholomew's after the Huguenots. Oh, okay. Who were, were massacred. I mean, they were Christians. Uh-huh. And, uh, and when the church fell into disrepair, which after the Revolutionary War, there was a period there, and then it fell, in, it picked up a little bit. Then when the uh, Civil War came, it fell again into disrepair and really went Pardon the expression. I shouldn't say this. I won't say that. <laughs> in, 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 in a hand basket. In, in, yeah. yeah, that's okay. what I'm gonna say. yeah. But uh, uh, and then uh, under I forgot which rector it was, they started having. They said, well, they didn't have the money to put the church back in good repair like it should have been, and they gradually got money long and they started this annual service and it was on St. Bartholomew's Day and back then because I remember my father saying that they had these services on St. which is August 24th regardless of what day of the week it fell. Oh. And people would come here and picnic because they came from so far away that they had to bring their picnics to, uh, I mean, they were still in sort of horse and buggy days, you gotta yeah, realize that. Yeah. And I mean, you come here, you're here for the day, more or less. And, uh, so, so it was like a homecoming for Episcopalians. That's, 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 that's what it was, right. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, then they, I think the attendance really started falling off. I mean, people don't have to go to church in the middle of the week or something. That, so then they changed it to make it the Sunday, closest to the 24th and that's the way it is now uh -huh. in fact they had way back then they had services so long sometimes because the rector figured he had he had a captive audience <laughs> <laughs> and he'd get there and preach for a couple of hours oh my land and in the meantime the wardens would come around and serve brandy and biscuits oh. <laughs> during break time i mean that's what they say. I mean, I'm not making that up. That's what they, uh, well, Lay, I, I have been attending this service for a number of years, and as narrow as those benches are to sit on, and hard as if it's hard to imagine a service that would last much more than an hour. Amen. But I agree they, with you. <laughs> if, the, if the sermon itself lasted two hours, that would be yeah, torture. <laughs> yeah, that would be torture. See, he was up there in that pulpit. He could look down and see he was going to sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, now the uh, I've heard there, that they uh, had somebody walking around with a little long spritz, and he would nod to them if they were going to sleep. So he'd go over there and wake them up. Oh my! weren't allowed to <laughs> doze oh, off. Oh no! Oh no! That was sacrilegious, I guess. Well, um, the the church now is the well. For instance, you just put a new roof on here a couple of years ago. Yes. Authentic wood shingled roof which must yeah. have been expensive it was expensive um, and it has a kick in it if is you there, see what a kick is yeah it's beautiful see that's what originally had a kick in it so you and the you one put it the back. roof before this didn't it was just yeah so that the the kick is the original construction the yeah, way it was originally motif. yeah it's, it is well now how do you how do you get the money to keep this building up is there a foundation or no, what no we uh just to go out and solicit and hope people will give to it. And we only have this one service. Now, does the offering at this service go to help maintain yes. the building? Mm -hmm. I see. And I, it's I mean, it didn't pay for that roof. We no, went out and did something. Solicited funds for that. Yeah. yeah. We had some very uh, generous contributions from, and then we, and we, uh, from different people, different businesses, and we also had the... Uh, uh, some foundations, to, you know, that you have to, there was one foundation that we tried to get into, but they have so many strings attached to it. We said, we don't want that. Uh-huh, yeah. I mean, we could have gotten money from them, but they were going to tell you how to, when you had to have it open, when you had to do this, when you had to say, I forgot which foundation that was, but we said, no, no, yeah. <laughs> be independent. Well, and we managed to raise the money. And, and looking around the building, uh, I mean, it's an absolutely good good shape but not pristine i mean i can see there's some places in the ceiling that need to be repaired yeah. and you said that these metal bars are what is holding the two walls from uh, hey, crumbling That's out right. this way That's just exactly. i guess originally those wooden beams they, were they there did. for the same reason um what would what in your mind yeah. would be as curator what would be the next project that you would hope that can be done here that well, you'd like to see that. Uh, they're talking about restoring some of these windows like they originally were. These are a little different than they were. Oh. And uh, that's in the looking and seeking process right now, more or less. Uh -huh. To find out how they originally were, they might not have been quite that uh, <coughs> deep. Or, and the chalice over top of them was a little different uh -huh. and the uh, shutters aren't original oh they the aren't. back doors aren't original well it'd be hard to imagine everything in here lasting from 1733 no, I mean, original original pipe, i'll put it like oh that. not oh you mean the, the design is different yeah i see mm -hmm. yeah well um the uh if somebody if some generous episcopalian wanted to give money to help restore or to maintain this, where would they send the money? Where would they, they send a send check? It, they could send it to me, H. Lay Phillips, uh, or they could send it to the Green Hill uh, Restoration Committee, care of H. Lay, H. Lay Phillips. Phillips, 5480 Catchpenny Road, Quantico, Maryland, 21856. Right. We'll put that on the screen just in case. Just in case somebody and, uh, wants to give any money. This here. money is uh, we we get it goes strictly for the restoration of this church and its yeah. grounds. I mean it's well, it's it's obviously I'm, a love affair I'm with you. I mean you 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 just love this building and and I know that you not single handedly but you're, no, no, oh you're, no <laughs> you're the main one around here that keeps this going. And now on the Sunday closest to Saint Bartholomew's Day, this place will be packed with people, yeah. with Episcopalians yeah. and non-Episcopalians who want to oh, come yeah, it's and- it's an ecumenical service as yeah. far as we're concerned. And participate and worship in a building where people have been been worshiping since 1733. is That's a, a historical perspective that not too many places have. That's right. Yeah, so Lay, thank you for being with us and telling and, us uh, a little bit about this. And if anybody wants to get one of these books 
you, you they we you had could some for yeah. loan to them or something like that. Well, we had them some enough. We have some for sale. And I forgot what, what kind of price we had on. Well, we'll we'll figure that it's, out. <laughs> but it's very interesting. I've read this. St. Bartholomew's I, Church, Stepney Parish, Maryland, on the shores of the Wicomico River, the old Green Hill Church. It's really been a pleasure to uh, be here at this wonderful site and with such a wonderful guy, H. Slay Phillips. Thank you for being with us here on Pack 14. Production of One on One was made possible in part by a grant from Peninsula Bank, a community bank with 25 offices serving Wicomico, Worcester, and Somerset counties.